Welcome to Hollywood Unapologetic. My name is Orlando Delbert. I wanted to speak a little bit about America's ideological divide, Hollywood's echo chamber, and the new Hollywood generation. <laughs> At this point in time in history, there seems to be a polarization of the American populace. Whether you lean towards one political party or another, one thing holds true. Our citizenry is divided culturally. In the early days of television, families across the country watched many of the same programs. Shows like The Ed Sullivan Show brought people together from 1948 through 1971. Sullivan's stage brought together a range of groundbreaking artists, rock and roll and Motown artists like The Beatles, Elvis Presley, Marvin Gaye, Janis Joplin, The Jackson Five, The Doors, The Supremes, The Rolling Stones, just to name a few. Broadway performances by the stars of musicals like West Side Story and My Fair Lady and comedic greats such as Richard Pryor, Carol Burnett, Ronnie Dangerfield, and the list just goes on and on and on. When CBS hired Sullivan in 1948, it was for him to host a new variety show format that combined vaudeville with television. It was called The Toast of the Town. In the show's first episode, Sullivan assembled an eclectic set of performances. Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, Rodgers and Hammerstein, a ballerina, a pianist, a troupe of firemen singing softly, and a boxing referee. Now, you may be scratching your head as to why such a variety of performance performances, and that is the point. The show had something for everyone. Today, we have variety shows in there, but what I want you to think about is why it was accomplished, more so than the format of the program. The Ed Sullivan Show, which was eventually known by in 1955, did well, even though he was known for notoriously messing up his monologues and introductions. It didn't matter. It brought people and families together for decades. You may be asking yourself, what in the world does the Ed Sullivan Show have to do with America's ideological divide, Hollywood's echo chamber, and the new Hollywood generation? The answer is, is a lot, actually. Although I didn't want to get too much into politics in this episode, there unquestionably is a rift between American ideologies today. And to some extent, Hollywood has some blame. Right now, with the polarization of its citizens fueled by manufactured fake news and alternative facts, is pulling the country apart. This will have long-lasting ramifications in all aspects of our society. Many feel Hollywood's liberal elite shove their views down the throats of Americans, and this sentiment has been growing in recent years. And I can tell you, living and working in Los Angeles for as long as I have, have seen how the Hollywood bubble can leave those within it disconnected to the rest of the country, or even the world for that matter. You can call it a cultural echo chamber that has grown over time. This is dangerous as we can see today because the further to the left the products offered by Hollywood has been shifting, it hasn't carried over the rest of the country. In fact, it has to some extent helped divide the country. Not everyone who enjoys reality programming of pawn store owners, survivalists or hunters may even watch shows like Modern Family. The further the push, the more it comes to across that the Hollywood believes it is culturally morally superior. This in part has helped create a vacuum that President Donald Trump has been able to take advantage of in his campaign for the presidency of the United States. He was able to appeal to those who felt forgotten and not represented politically and socially by attacking members of the White House News Corps and specific news agencies for calling him out on false claims and inaccurate statements. This in turn led to political opponents, world leaders, celebrity figures, and millions of people around the world to take notice and act out. This is relative in, a con in this context because the more people called him out on things, the more fuel he has to influence those same people that were forgotten. I'm not saying by any means the state of our nation is the doing of the decision makers inside Hollywood, but I am saying that the pursuit of the dollar by Hollywood and its unwillingness to offer broader and more diverse stories that would have to be tied to merchandising and franchise building are a factor that helped influence the split in our culture we see today beginning after the end of the Hollywood Golden Age in the 1960s. Hollywood does and will always follow the money. The expenses involved in many Hollywood motion pictures today are so high, the business machines simply want to minimize their financial risk. This is why you see so many of the same type of projects, remakes, sequels, prequels, reimaginings, and even the fracturing of existing brands in the pursuit of the commodification of Hollywood. This is why it is so important to be mindful of Hollywood's love affair with the color green and to look beyond the legacy way of the business of showing and create our own products. What's interesting to note is content creators from all over the world work in and around the Hollywood motion picture studios and television networks. 
And with the growing number of channels and programming, and digital distribution platforms like YouTube make it much easier for more people to have a voice and share it with the world. With that said, I am a strong proponent of us taking advantage of the tools we have available right now and to tell the stories we have of lives around us and in our communities, we can influence change. There is a real opportunity to cross the ideological divide ripping in cart this country today. My challenge to you is to consider a shared narrative where we all can learn from one another. Much like Ed Sullivan did for many years, he had the insight to bring across a very diverse group of talents from all over the world and for many introduced them to the global stage for the very first time. Our roles as content creators comes with a responsibility because many around the world identify with Hollywood as being the face of America. Really give that some thought. And because right now there is a growing vacuum in the cultural divide, there is a need now, more than before, to fill that space. There is opportunity in chaos. If more of us can get together to create films and television programming with a positive message, hire more people from broader backgrounds, and not limit ourselves and our potential by identifying one another by only race, color, sex, religion, sexual preference, or disability, we can then, and only then, influence the masses to be more open-minded. But it's gonna take a lot of work and commitment. Stories that can relate to more people would need to be written and then and only then can we have a broader reach of an audience as well as potentially influence others to want to tell the stories as well and hopefully not be afraid to tell them. This is at the core of the new Hollywood generation movement taking shape today. Before we wrap this up I just want to say it is our responsibility to take a step back and look at what is happening right now in our country. Look at it and take the time to research what is being said and how it is being said. Don't listen to just one news source. Look at news agencies abroad that have no ties to any American political party. Far too many people will just repeat what they hear from one source and that is dangerous. Trump has said to watch Fox News because they support his views instead of reporting news without bias. They won't report protests as they're happening live around the world when other news, major news agencies are. And by the way, for the first time in its long history, a CEO who was appointed by the president who serves at the pleasure of the president now runs Voice of America, or actually two 20-something political operatives from the Trump campaign are overseeing it. This is the first time in the history a U.S. president has been able to use a government resources as a propaganda tool. Now the White House has the ability to offer an alternative factual universe for their supporters directly, paid for and with the resources of the federal government. This takes away the free media's ability to sort out lies from the truth that we rely on. Prior to this, a bipartisan appointed board of governors by both Republicans and Democrats oversaw this news agency. It was designed and run in a way where it was insulated from domestic politics. This prevented the news agency to be used as a partisan tool by anyone in the government. We are in a very dangerous time, my friends. Steps are taking shape right now from the populist president that strongly resemble the beginnings of a fascist government. Please take a look at what is going on objectively without emotional ties to any one particular issue over another and be mindful of what is going on. Ever-growing splintering of our country is by design and to unite one another is going to take a lot of work. Please consider what I offered you today and consider what your role is as a new generation of content creators. The world is greatly influenced by what is seen on the screen and heard on the radio. Let's be the new Hollywood generation. Let's give them something that will drive everyone to do something bigger and to make a positive difference in the world. It's something I'd like to leave you with. We are all in it together. Each and every one of you is an important part of our future. You're important to the lives of those who surround you. You're important to your own communities. You're important to our industry. No matter what, remain optimistic and focused on your goal. Never stop believing in yourself. Always remember, you are the key to your own success. Take a breath, move forward. Together, let's create a revival, the resurgence of Hollywood, and bring back the auteur to cinema. Be an active part of the new Hollywood generation. You are a representative of the new Hollywood generation. And please, subscribe to our channel and share. The interviews are coming. <laughs>
a survival guide against the cynicism and the hypocritical series of books designed to help you better prepare for success. It is now our time to strive to be a better version of ourselves and to be inclusive of one another. We, as a community, can grow together and be the change our industry needs. We can find unity together and be the change our future needs. We are the new Hollywood generation. Welcome to Hollywood Unapologetic.